Thank you. That's, uh, that's a tough act to follow. Um, I don't think I have any magic for you. Um, and I don't have a lot of time. There's a time bomb going off here on my... I shouldn't say that right now, given what's going on in our politics, should I? <laughs> that's a fake bomb there. But uh, um, I'm going to talk about disruption, but there's so many other things I'd love to share with this group. I, I love being in front of the folks who make the engine room run in your companies that, uh, you know, the, the digital heartbeat of a company today is absolutely critical for everything. And I thought, what are, what are the messages I would like to share with you uh, at the highest level? But before I do that, I first want to say thanks to Globant for, one, the partnership we have uh, on the, the go-to-market side with Weigh-In uh, plus Globant. And uh, I would encourage you all to investigate that, uh, and I'll explain why I think that's important. But I'd also like to thank them for their support of Kariki. That's my give back, my, my dot org, my charity, uh, my passion, and something uh, that I'm trying to get done. And we, Martina and I had a really great and, and uh, actually kind of separated at birth conversation about uh, what we can do to go move the education ball forward. And I think more than a few people are frustrated with the K through 12 education experience, certainly here in the U.S., it's a, it's a real challenge. Uh, we have the world's largest Lego bucket of free and open uh, learning assets uh, out there that are available for anybody to use, and eventually we're going to put all of those Lego bucket uh, pieces together and create what I call Legoland, which is a free online uh, web-enabled multimedia, uh, real-time scored, self-paced, on-demand, internationalized, localized, and certified K through 12 experience that flips the classroom. Now, we can use those within government schools. I don't call them public schools, I call them government schools. Uh, we can use those in um, uh, new private schools or charter schools, or we can homeschool, or we can just lifelong learn by just walking around with an iPad and actually earning a degree and then pushing to talk to a for free or for fee tutor, or I call it tech support. I'm stuck. How can you help me through that? And, and that's that's the. Some people call it my fantasy. I call it my vision uh, for moving education forward, so that we're not trapped behind monopoly government schools. We're not trapped behind no choice. We're not trapped behind going as fast. We have it no child left behind. That just means we're going to go as slow as the slowest person in the room, no matter what their reasons for going. So I want to have no parent, teacher, or child held back. Anyhow, we had a great chat about it, and um, Globin is being very, very generous in their uh, financial support, and there's a whole bunch of ideas we have in working together going forward to move that forward. So enough of the public service announcement. Uh, now, I am a raging capitalist, but I have a heart. Um, so, but now let's rage on about capitalism. So, uh, disruption is is out there, and we'll talk a lot about disruption in this chat. Uh, but uh, I thought, what are the three messages I'd sort of like to leave you all with? And I think you should always start a speech with that, not finish with it. One is, uh, I believe that we all need to get focused on the go-to-market side, not the cost-cutting and making the engine room run side. And I know a lot of you are in financial services, and that is sort of the go-to-market side. That's where the money's made, that sort of thing. But ultimately and eventually, um, businesses are not going to get there by cutting costs or being more efficient or, or, or whatever. You're going to make money, and, and the CEOs are going to give you money to go get more customers. As I always used to, when I was CEO at Sun, I would say, no company ever went out of business for having too much business just hasn't happened yet. And um, uh, the, the IT budgets for cost cutting shrink. The IT budgets for generating revenue are growing and growing. And I think everybody needs to try and figure out. I, I told every employee, if you are not there with a direct line to making the customer experience better, then you're going to get outsourced. We're going to move. We're going to move. You're going to end up just not being part of it. Everybody in our company had to have a direct line and say, yeah, I make a difference to the customer every day. And if you don't feel that in your job, then uh, there's a, 
there's a good chance you'll end up in the cloud somewhere uh, working for some other company. The second thing that I will say is uh, the customer doesn't come to you anymore. You gotta go to the customer. And small shop owners are learning that. Uh, and uh, people who uh, are doing TV advertising are learning that's not getting to your customer. You gotta get to where they are. And a lot of you are right there right now on your phone or your iPad or you're at a kiosk or you're, um, you're on a Yahoo website or something like that. And you've got to get to your customer with a, an experience, not a, a blabcast or a broadcast or a, an invasion of their, their space with something that is not interesting. You have to have something that's engaging and gives them a chance to talk back. It turns out customers do want to, they don't really want to talk to a person. I know my wife would just, she doesn't like to shop, but she is single-handedly driving Amazon sales up. <laughs> she doesn't want to talk, but she wants to talk back. She wants to engage and she wants to, and everybody now has a way to engage with their, their, their um, store with a touch screen, a keyboard, a speaker, I mean a microphone and a camera. Those are all input mechanisms to talk back to whoever is trying to sell you something. And uh, I think all of IT needs to figure out how to project and move the CRM from the Chicago sales office right out into the face of your customer. And it's a whole new concept. We actually, uh, Richard and I were talking to an ad agency and he says, oh, you just, he, he gave us a great line. He says, you're just moving what we're doing away, just moving the CRM right out in front, out of your sales office, out of your sales reps, right into the hands of the customer. And that's a very, very powerful thing because you want to get them at that moment of truth when they decide to buy. You want them hitting, you know, buy after they've filled up the shopping cart. The third thing is I want to talk a little bit today about the power of small data because I think big data has, is slightly overrated. Uh, I mean, it's helpful for AI and other things like that, but I want to give another, another side, side to the story. Anyhow, so the, the heart of disruption is have lunch and innovate or be lunch. Um, or if you're a tenured professor, you can just do lunch. Um, but uh, that, that, those, those jobs are few and far between, and, and, and I can't believe they're very... Um, satisfying, so um, you can see how old I am. I use paper. I see guys now when they get they, they go to a wedding and they give the speech and they got their phone on their iPhone and they're reading their, the speech like that. It's, uh, anyhow, um, you know, disruption is everywhere. We certainly uh, messed up the computer industry for quite a while. You might have heard the phrase, "The network is the computer." Uh, we invented that back in the 80s, and it's finally happening. Now it's called cloud. We could have saved a lot of ink and a lot of words if we had just called it cloud back then, but we thought the network as a computer is a little more clever and, and elegant. But um, anyhow, we went after some big players, and we had to. We were four 27-year-olds when we started. It sounds a lot like Globe, and, and you weren't quite 27, but um, they, were, they looked a lot younger when they started. Um, but we were going up against IBM, DAC, Hewlett, Packard, Intel, Microsoft, uh, and a whole, whole host of other major players. There were, when we started, there were 200 different uh, binary microprocessor operating system, binary application APIs that uh, existed out there that we had to got, compete against and get application developers to write to us. You have to do something different. To, to win over when, when you're, you know, you're four 27-year-olds going up against that, and you have to find a way to disrupt it. One of the ways we found out to disrupt was, why don't we open source everything? Lower the barrier to exit. Get mankind to help you. And you know what? That really resonated with, with customers. The second thing we said is, let's network everything. Sun was the first company to put IP, TCP IP, on every computer we ever shipped. 
Everybody else was doing land manager, deck net, SNA, um, Apollo. Had, I mean, there were so many networking schemes out there. And we just went with an open source TCP IP. And then we said, why don't we build our computers off of off the shelf components? We'll just take the best of everything, assemble it together, and then ship it using everybody else's R&D, everybody else's unit volumes, all the rest of it. And those three things catapulted us into uh, an absolute dogfight with the biggest and, and most successful companies. You have to find your way to disrupt. And, and uh, you know, every business that doesn't disrupt, you know, sometimes you're the windshield, sometimes you're the bug. And let me tell you, the windshield is a way better job than being the bug. And uh, you, you have to understand that. Um, you know, the, the innovation that happens is you never know who your competitor is going to be. And I, I met with a, a, several of you out here, and, and you thought, well, I got so many things to go do, like to go fix this, to tune this up, to transform this a little bit. Transform isn't enough. You have to, like, completely understand somebody's coming at you in a big-time way, and you don't see it. Um, the cab companies, they could have cut costs all day long. They could have made the cars nicer. They could have lowered their prices, and they still would have gotten Ubered badly because the, the, the whole scene is so much better, and the whole concept, the whole transaction, everything about it just was absolutely transformational. Now, is Uber a cab company? No. They are a logistics cloud. That's all Uber is, a logistics cloud that, that does the finance, financial uh, transaction at the same time. And now, they also realized that they were going to get Ubered with the driverless car. And so when you put the drone, as, uh, the land drone, I call, that's what I call cars, a land drone together with the Uber app, the dislocation People still don't understand. There are enough parking spots in America to cover the entire state of Connecticut. Who needs a parking spot when you don't have a car? Why is cloud computing happening? Because 15, 20 years ago, the average utilization of a server was 15%. What do you think the utilization is of your car right now? 15% maybe, right? That's why the sharing economy. Someday your PC is going to be, that's another one that doesn't get uh, high utility. Anything without high, boats, you know, Airbnb, all, there's a whole bunch of things out there that are getting uh, addressed with this whole sharing model to uh, get higher utilization. But think of all the jobs. The number one job title in America is truck driver. Now, when all of these trucks are basically Uber cars that just you put a trailer hitch on the back and it just drives all night on an empty freeway when you're all sleeping, um, truck drivers not. Think about Ford. All of a sudden, the utilization of their cars goes from 5 or 10% to 85%. How many more cars do we need when you can drive utilization to that level? It's going to change everything. Um, think about, I mean, here's a job, car stylist. Who needs a car stylist? I mean, you're not going to order an Uber up and say, I want one that's pink I with, you know, like a little stuff hanging off the windshield, you know, or the, the rear view mirror or whatever. It's, these jobs all go away. Think about parking garages. Think about your garage. I, you know, I think you ought to invest in uh, Home Depot because everybody's going to convert their garage into a, an a Airbnb bedroom. <laughs> now, so who needs Holiday Inn anymore now? I mean, the, the, I don't know what all the impacts of all of this are going to be, but um, it, it, will, it will be fascinating to, to see how that all shakes out. I, I remember when uh, I walked into the boardroom at Sun and I asked, it wasn't too long ago, I asked the board, I said, who are our main competitors? And I went around the room and they said, oh, IBM, DAC, Hewlett Packard, Intel, Microsoft, all these, you know. Uh, I said, no, it's Google. 
Google was just starting. And they were doing um, just, you know, selling every word in the alphabet to the highest bidder every day for free, or for, for the highest fee. And they thought, no, no, that's not a competitor. I said, absolutely. They're buying, at the time, they were buying 17% of all motherboards in the world and putting them into their data centers. And it turned out Google absolutely blasted all of us out of the water uh, with, I mean, Eric Schmidt left and actually implemented the network as the computer by doing cloud computing over at Google. We tried, I tried, and the inertia and the drug of quarterly sales and making the numbers and being a public company and sales reps who got commission is, it was just too tough a drug to change. Now, it's not, I mean, it didn't mean we failed. Well, we did, but I mean, that happens. It's, but we did enable the next generation and, and cloud computing and, and drive that model. But, you know, it, you guys all have to beware. Everyone thinks the internet is changing, but it's gonna change somebody else's business. And um, uh, I wanna change education. Curriki is my model, the flipped classroom, free, open, choice. Uh, and then that's the only way I know how to, I can think of to break the adhesions we have in the whiteboard. I mean, you think about it happened back in the silent movie days, you had 40,000 piano players in, in America playing music to the, you know, the, the musical score while the silent movie went on. Now, you were hopefully going to get somebody who showed up. Hopefully, they showed up so sober. Hopefully, they were good, and hopefully, they've been practicing. <laughs> That's the same as a teacher. Now, so what happened when we learned to put the musical score right on the film? You got the two best piano players. And by the way, the two best are, like, gifted. Not everybody is equal, no matter how hard you try. No matter how hard I try, I'll never be a gifted piano player. Trust me. But all of a sudden, now everybody gets to experience the best musical score when they go watch a movie. And that kind of innovation has got to happen. The other one that I'm trying to work on is um, the whole concept of matching buyers and sellers. And I think that, and creating demand, and, and that's the whole advertising world. My, my dad was vice chairman at American Motors. Anybody remember that? The Pacer, the Gremlin. My first car was a Gremlin X. It was hot, a three on the floor, straight six. It was pretty cool, but um, I digress. Uh, but I'd watch the ads on the Javelin, and I'd say, and we'd all laugh at them, and, and I said, did, did um, that ad do any good? Yeah, he goes, it has a great recall. And that's cool, Dad. Did it sell any cars? Good question, son. We still don't know whether ads on TV or billboards or naming rights sell anything, yet that's where the bulk of advertising revenue goes. But I'll talk a little bit more about that, so we're trying to do that. Two, two areas where, you know, I, uh, I'm all in with Globant. We're very excited to partner with them. We announced our partnership with them, and I, uh, I'm very, very excited about it. We need digital native. We get it. We're, we understand zeros and ones and the whole process of going out beyond the walls of the data center uh, to get at the, and I think Globin is just one of the, one of the most modern, um, and and with it, uh, and, and also very nice and high integrity companies I've run into in this space. So we're very excited to have them as a go-to-market partner at Weigh-in. Um, I remember when I used to try and sell Sunrays; they were our thin client, and we go in and we talk to the head of PC uh, administration in a large company, and they're managing. 30,000 PCs, and we tell them, listen, you can do that all with two people instead of the uh, 1,500 people you have managing your PCs. We can do it with two people. And the guy would go, that's very interesting. Thank you, and we'd leave, and then he'd never answer the phone call. Because you know what? There's no, nobody who's VP of anything with only two people reporting to him. So <laughs> that's always been you know, a challenge you know, with, with the big IT services. They're looking to build you a Frankenstein. They're looking to 
basically upgrade from, you know, going from Frankenstein 1.0 to Frankenstein 2.0, oh, Oracle bought the leg, the uh, left arm went bankrupt, and, you know, they tripled the price of the brain, you know, and, 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 and then you try and upgrade your data center with these environments, it's very, very brutal. There's no, none of that that I feel coming out of Globin, and I think they're, they're the new age, and they're doing things with zeros and ones and not with, um, not with the arc, you know, computer architecture. The one thing that Sun did with open interfaces was to try to get you to be hardware independent. Uh, you can get trapped into, into software. Anyhow, the, uh, I agree with all their trends. The, the ones that I think you also need to watch out for are drones, land, sea, and air drones, but that may or may not impact your business, but you know, watch Amazon, they're way into drones, uh, and, and that impacts they're moving the CRM and actually they're moving the factory right to your doorstep. Uh, the other one that I think is very, very transformational is the uh, whole blockchain thing. And I'm not just saying currencies, uh, cryptocurrencies, but I think that absolutely blows up governments because one of the best ways to tax you all is just to print money, quantitative easing. That's there's nothing quantitative easing about that. That is just strictly taxation without representation or legislation as it just basically drives inflation, which devalues the dollar and taxes you for every uh, piece of income or asset that you have denominated in dollars. And um, they, the government, mark my words, is going to make cryptocurrency illegal for as long as they can because that does not give them the right to tax take your money and buy votes with the money that they taxed. So, but blockchain, blockchain, um, these public and, and uh, hopefully uncrackable ledgers are gonna be very important. You're gonna see things like title, companies just go, what happened to my business? And um, one of the things we wanna do is blockchain with Kariki so that every time you take a test, your score is out there and you now have as part of your resume that you took this class, you got this score on it when you did it, and there's nobody that can take that away from you. And you don't need to pay Stanford $75,000 a year to get that put on your blockchain. You can do that on your own and, and somebody else can sort of it. Anyhow, that's going to change things in some uh, uh, pretty aggressive ways. Everybody's going to need help on all of these transformations. Uh, I think you found a good partner, uh, and I'm I'm very very excited and pleased. We're focused not on the uh, actual customer interface of what we're doing away in. We're we're counting on partners like these guys. I grew up in the car business where we we counted on dealers. We did that at Sun, and it worked very very well. And we're very excited about doing that here. So I want to I'm quickly trying to race through all of this stuff. Um, uh, you know, data is, is the new oil. It used to be the network is the computer, and computing was the big deal. Now everybody knows we're in the information economy. And somebody a long time ago said, you have no privacy, get over it. Oh, that was me. Um, <laughs> and and uh, I, I truly believe that. Uh, I know a lot of, some people argue that, you know, we're going to claw it back. Uh, I tell my boys, I have four boys, I tell them, listen, everything, anything that gets captured, either that you input or somebody takes a picture of you becomes a digital tattoo, and it never goes away, and it is always. I mean, one thing humans don't do is keep secrets. That's a, there's very few things I can say that you might want to argue with me, but I will tell you that I'm right. Humans don't keep secrets, and... and, uh, and the only person I've ever seen who's been able to erase anything is Hillary erased 30,000 emails. And I, I, I know nobody else ever who's been able to do that, but uh, that's neither here nor there. Um, <laughs> sorry, I digress again. Um, so, you know, we got the GDPR thing coming along. Let me see. I'm doing pretty well. I did a red eye last night, so I apologize for my... Um, so I want to talk about um, third-party data, first-party data, and zero-party data, and just at least do the, the uh, 
or declared data. I mean, people are using lots of different vocabulary. We all know what third-party data is. That's what Facebook and Google have on you. And that's what they gave to Cambridge Analytics and got in a lot of trouble, right? And that whole world of third-party data, and a lot of you rely on third-party data, and then you go hire a company to do this big data, big data analytics and try and find stuff. And, you know, that was supposedly going to be the holy grail in advertising where instead of running a TV ad, you go to Facebook or Google. And the first time we ran a digital ad was 1994 or something with AT&T. They had a 43% click-through rate on the digital ad. Can you believe that? 43%. You know what it is now? Less than a percent. With all the big data analytics and all the machine learning and all of this, that, and the other thing, and all the precise targeting, we're down to less than 1%. And over half of that is a mistaken click. <laughs> so big data isn't working. Now, the other problem with that is that all of the data becomes third-party data owned. So when you run an ad, all of the data goes to Facebook and Google. And Amazon is the other beast that's collecting all the data. That's where it's all going. And now they, because of uh, Cambridge Analytics, Facebook said, oh, sorry, Bumble, we're going to cut you off. And oh, by the way, we're getting into the dating app business too. That happened. They used their mistake to their advantage to cut off a competitor and go into the business against them. It's, it's the new oil. It's the new, it's the new battleground. Um, so um, first party data is the stuff you get off of cash registers or off the, the scanner at the front door or whatever, but there's another uh, component of first party data that we call zero party data, which is what the customer offers you willingly, opts in. It's called declared data. When you fill out a form or you enter a sweepstakes or you click a vote on a quiz or anytime you engage out there uh, on the network and it turns out with all the GDPR stuff and everything else, getting zero party data that's declared data is going to be absolutely key. Now, big data will always be there and you're always going to want to look at the macro trends and all the rest of it. But if somebody is, you know, firing a big data shotgun out there versus somebody who's got a, a scope and a sniper rifle, they're going to pick off customers for sure you're going to hit everything and pay a lot of extra, for, you know, you'll throw a lot of lead out there, but it's not necessarily going to hit the target. And I'm not saying you shouldn't do big data. I'm just saying that little data is, is very clever because you actually ask Chris, are you a male or a female? Or I guess you have to say other now. But um, so everybody agrees that first party data gives you better results. And, and all the surveys say that it's obvious. Marketeers believe that, and they can hang, obtain a higher ROI. So how do you, how do you get zero-party data? How do you get customers to want to go do that? And that's an art, and that's the new average. You can't get zero-party data from a TV ad. You just can't. You can't get it from a billboard. You can't talk to that billboard when you're driving by at 70 miles an hour. And I was always fascinated that AT&T would do naming rights on a ballpark, because that's not the moment of truth. You know, I mean, it could be Oscar Mayer Wiener Park or Coors Park. That always made sense to me, because that was the moment of truth in terms of when you buy a beer and a hot dog. But um, So we at Wayne have created and, and are going to market with Globin to try and allow you to be part of the go-to-market revenue generating thing and get it right in the face of the customer with a suite of, we have an iTunes store of 75 prefabbed, pre-engineered, pre-tested, ready-to-go templates. They're more than templates. They're actually reference implementations and architectures for 
experiences that you can put and embed omni-channel on websites and kiosks and billboards on uh, cell phones, wherever the customer may be, and you can present these to them. And often by offering some value in return, and often just by offering some insight or some fun in return, they'll give you zero-party data. And we give you all of the prefab forms and allow you to ask whatever questions you want. I want your zip code, I want your cell phone number, I want your this, I want that, I want your name, I want your um, uh, salary, they'll tell you everything. Um, I, I, I work on an advisory board for a very large telephone company in Dallas and uh, they did some surveys on what are people willing to give you for how much money and it was literally a few hundred dollars, they will give you everything on your phone. And your phone has everything. Every app you're on, every how long you're on, who you talk to, who you text, who you, uh, who you visited, where you, when you get up, when you go to sleep. It, it, think about all of the information AT&T and Verizon have on you. It's stunning. And they asked the customer, if I gave you $300, would you give me all that data? And they all, not all, but a vast majority of them said yes. That's how, you don't have to offer much to have people. HGTV does a, um, a, that sweepstakes where they give away a home every year. They get 130 million first party data records using our sweepstakes thing in six weeks. You offer a chance to win a house and they'll send all of the naughty pictures on their phone right to you. I mean, it's just, <laughs> it, that's just for the chance. So um, we have different experiences. We did one with Air New Zealand where the experience was basically they would show a couple of pictures, a golf course or a beach. They would show, uh, um, I don't know, a whole bunch of different things. You just pick the ones and, and it would create, by using uh, their algorithms, it would then recommend, based on what you clicked on, uh, would recommend a place to go visit and you would get a chance to win a ticket. And if you didn't win the ticket, they would, using email, would send you a discount to that place anyhow. And um, they were able to put it through Omni Channels. And th in the first month, they got a 38 to one ROI on the campaign. It was pretty stunning. They got $5 million in incremental sales tracked just via email and 78,000 via cookie. And uh, they ga gathered 100,000 first party data records, zero party data records, and people enjoyed doing it. And it sort of, uh, right now uh, Safeway has a, a quiz for a recipe. Um, and you, they show, do you want chicken or beef? Do you want, do you have a half hour or an hour and a half? Do you want to spend 10 bucks a person or five bucks a person, whatever, and you go and you click on all this stuff, and then it offers you a recipe right there and they want to tie that into their shopping cart so then you get home delivery on it and it shows up in time for you to be able to cook it. So these kinds of first party data experiences are very, very powerful and um, really, really change. Um, we this year, with just 130 of our annual subscription, are gonna collect nearly three quarters of a billion first party data records. And you can see the growth rate that we're on. Um, this is the way to combat, combat um, Facebook and Google and the enemy of just about everybody right now. Um, and that's um, Amazon. We are also embedding these into ad units so that these experiences are part of your media buy and people don't have to even leave they don't have to leave, leave the Yahoo website. They don't have to leave the Snapchat stream or whatever, and they can just, we have very high performance, very, very quick, no latency, where you have a blank screen and all of these experiences happen right there. So uh, we're gonna be get, getting after the media buys that have been on TV. So let me just leave it with um, one other thought, and, and that is, um, all kinds of companies are looking 
at their traditional customers and not thinking. Now, I mentioned Uber, but think about what Amazon is doing. I mean, they're helping take out the computer industry with their, their, uh, their cloud services, but they've also blown away how many small independent retailers, and um, they are blowing away brands. Do you realize how useless a brand is anymore? Think about how many brands in the top most recognizable brands are new in the last 20 years. And then think about when you were in high school, how old the brands were that you knew. Coca-Cola, Ford, General Motors, GE is like gone. And, and so um, I'm wearing a lot more Kirkland brand than you realize. <laughs> I'm not gonna show you, but let me tell you, the, the Costco private label, the uh, Amazon private label, and that little box, that Amazon thing is going to, you know, when you say, I want to order uh, a pound of butter, they're not going to, Amazon's not going to bring you Land of Lakes. They're going to bring you whoever they want to bring you. And you're not going to care. And brands are going to all face huge, huge issues. Um, financial services companies are going to have to worry about Amazon offering credit. They may not even do it with cards because all you need is your phone. But, you know, what happens in that world? Any and everybody can, uh, can get Uber or Amazon at this point, and I think you all just need to really, really uh, pay attention and, and be careful about all of that. Anyhow, um, we'd love to talk to you with Globin about how to go to market and uh, get at zero party data and how to tie that into your data lakes and your security and privacy and scalability routines rather than doing one-offs that your current ad, ad agencies are doing or that you're not doing it at all. Um, I'd love your help and support of Kariki, C-U-R-R-I-K-I dot org. Uh, it's the most expensive thing I've ever done personally and I'd love you to Join me in that uh, expensive endeavor. Uh, follow me on Twitter or send me email. Uh, and uh, I, I went to zero. So I think I got most of that out there as quickly as I could on time. And uh, thank you. Uh, have, a, have a good rest of the, the meeting. Thank you. <laughs>